this just in. The state public safety department says another inmate with COVID-19 has died. This is the third COVID-related inmate death. Officials say this latest fatality was a male between 50 to 60 years old at the Halava Correctional Facility. The first two deaths were inmates at Saguaro Correctional Center in Arizona. We'll have more on this story on HNN's digital platforms. We are tracking some other breaking news. Let's take a live look outside now towards Punchbowl. Heavy rains, blustery winds are just battering parts of the state. Uh, all thanks to a strong cold front that's moving through over the islands. Welcome inside our digital center here, Ian Schering, alongside Ashley Nagaoka. Thank you for watching This Is Now Today. Several weather advisories in effect uh, that we want to tell you about. And since this morning, the severe weather has been causing power outages. It's creating dangerous driving conditions, even has brought down some large trees. That's right. Check out this new video just into our newsroom. Those strong gusts uprooted one of the trees at Kapiolani Park. Yellow caution tape was put up around the exposed roots and a viewer from Maui, check this out, sent us a photo of a downed tree at the Hyatt Residence Club in Ka'anapali. And the National Weather Service says the storm could bring two to four inches of snow to Big Island summits. The University of Hawaii is urging drivers to exercise caution when visiting the summit of Mauna Kea. UH says two car accidents were reported earlier, including this overturned vehicle. Officials say the summit can be one of the most dangerous places in Hawaii because of the extreme altitude and weather conditions. And because of the remote location, cell phone service is always not reliable and emergency services may be two hours away. Now for the latest on the forecast, let's check in with Guy Hagi. Aloha on this Wednesday, that juicy stormy cold front moving through the islands with very strong and gusty corner winds as well as a lot of rain. We've got thunderstorms with heavy downpours coming down already uh, hit Kauai and Oahu where flood advisories have been posted. A wind advisory is on for the entire state with the f because of the gusty winds that that storm front will produce. Some spots could get gusts upwards of 50 miles an hour and already there's been a handful of power outages. Now as far as the surf, we're expecting a rising swell to hit north and west shores later today and that will trigger high surf alerts no doubt but that's later today and this swell will likely be a wasted effort most likely will be stormy and messy for that swell because of the northerly winds expected tomorrow we got to get through the stormy weather first today heavy downpours isolated thunderstorms that could lead to flooding in some areas and that's the that's the case across the state and then drier conditions as that front moves away with a drier air mass and some cooler temperatures from those northerly winds Keep it here in Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. The storm conditions hit hard early this morning, impacting roads and causing power outages. Our Billy V is on the road with more on the severe weather. Aloha from Kamehameha Highway. Thank you very much. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking a look at some of the roads. Earlier this morning, there were rain showers and wind conditions enough to where there were powder, power outages that affected some of the street lights across Oahu. Uh, but right now, uh, at this time, the traffic is pretty good. Uh, there's nothing really to slow you down on your major thoroughfares. But this morning, there were slowdowns, not only on the major thoroughfares, but also on the back roads as a lot of people started to make their commute, uh, going to school. And once again, the rain and the front as it came through did have a little bit of, uh, shall we say, uh, prevailing conditions uh, on our roads. But once again, conditions are continuing to improve on the western end of the state. Let's get you back into the station. Hawaii Senator Brian Schatz and other Democratic leaders in the U.S. Senate met with President Joe Biden this morning to discuss a $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. The meeting comes two days after the president met with Republican senators who are proposing a package about a third as big. Biden and the rest of the Democratic leadership say a much bigger bill is needed to tackle the pandemic, as well as the economic fallout it's caused. Biden told reporters he thinks his bill will get some GOP support. Here at home, the state health department is keeping an eye on a highly contagious British variant of the coronavirus that could be here in Hawaii. They're still examining lab samples to confirm. The B117 strain is more transmissible, but so far studies have not shown that vaccines are less effective against it. 
Epidemiologist Dr. Sarah Kemble says the mutation is concerning, but it doesn't change their vaccination plans. And it means that it's critically important right now as we push forward with the vaccine efforts that we continue to practice all of the mitigation guidance. Anything that slows the virus down, whether it's vaccine, whether it's wearing a mask, whether it's physical distancing. It's really important to go ahead and get vaccinated uh, when, when the vaccine is available to you uh, so, so that we can knock this virus down while it's still susceptible to um, the immune response to the existing vaccines. DOH hopes to be able to identify the strain through genome testing by Friday. Efforts to get more people vaccinated are ramping up. Registrations for inoculations at Long's Drugs pharmacies open on Tuesday. Seven pharmacies will start doing shots next week Thursday in the communities you see there on the screen. The specific stores are going to be announced at a later date. Despite the case count dropping and the number of vaccinations rising, Governor Ige says he likely won't loosen restrictions on Oahu anytime soon. He sat down one-on-one -on -one with Mahalani Richardson for more on the state's COVID response. On the call every week with the federal government is we need more vaccine. Governor Ige says 50 locations across Hawaii are administering the vaccine. And while the state gets up to 40,000 doses per week, he wants more. We are definitely prepared to deliver more than twice what we're getting right now. Even at that, it would take us to the end of summer to, to deliver two doses to, you know, a million people. Some unions have criticized the state, saying it has no vaccine plan. But Ige says those who have high contact jobs or cannot telework get first dibs because of the shortage. Is there a plan or is it more figuring it out as it goes along? Well, we've asked, uh, we've asked all agencies to identify priority uh, employees. The governor says the state is working on vaccine pilot programs with two private companies for changes to the Safe Travels program, possibly by the end of the year. We've um, been working uh, on changes that would recognize uh, the status of being vaccinated. While COVID cases trend downward, there's a push for faster reopening of youth sports, bars and restaurants. Would you recommend to Mayor Blangieri to keep the tier system intact or would you recommend any changes? He did ask me about that and I, I suggested that he keep it basically intact. Meanwhile, HNN's political analyst says during Ige's State of the State address, he expected the governor to apologize for dismal delays in getting out unemployment benefits. Why didn't you apologize? Well, you know, we have been uh, struggling with unemployment for a long time, and I wish that the system was better, but it's old and antiquated. Mahalani Richardson, Hawaii News Now. A U.S. Capitol Police officer who died in the deadly riots last month is now the fifth private citizen to ever lie in state at the U.S. Capitol Rotunda. Deborah Alfaron has more on the somber tribute. Friends and family join lawmakers in a ceremony paying tribute to U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick. Still our hearts, O oh God, in this moment, as overwhelmed as we are with grief, shock, uncertainty, even anger, and all the other emotions that invade this hallowed occasion. Sicknick's family says it was always his dream to become a police officer. The 42-year-old joined the Capitol Police in 2008 after serving in the military. Brian was a peacekeeper who loved his dogs and his girlfriend Sandra and his family and the New Jersey Devils. He was caught in the wrong place at the wrong time and a day, on a day when peace was shattered. Sicknick died from his injuries after a violent mob stormed the Capitol on January 6th. So far, there have been no arrests in his killing. An urn carrying his remains lay in honor in the very building he died defending. Our promise to Brian's family is that we will never forget his sacrifice. President Biden and the First Lady paid their respects Tuesday night. Officer Sicknick is being laid to rest in a private ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Capitol Hill.
The Proud Boys are a far-right group whose members were allegedly among those that stormed the Capitol in the attack last month. Here in the U.S., the Department of Homeland Security says the Proud Boys are, quote, ideologically motivated violent extremists who are fueled by false narratives. Former Honolulu police officer Niall Silva will be sentenced today for his role in the Kealoha corruption scandal. More than four years ago, Silva pleaded guilty to lying on the stand to protect Catherine and Louis Kealoha after they framed a relative for a mailbox theft. Jesse Ebersole will also be sentenced this afternoon. Three years ago, the Hawaii County firefighter admitted that he lied to a grand jury about his affair with Catherine. Silva's attorney says he was a key factor in the Kealoha's convictions. He's assisted um, in a lot of different ways. In fact, he was the first person who came in and uh, I believe the, the government will admit that he was pivotal in their further investigation. The bedrock principle of our criminal justice system is that people take an oath to tell the truth. When a person stands in front of a jury and lies, a police officer does that. There has to be ramifications to send a message to other people. Both Ebersole and Silva are expected to get a max of several months confinement, but could get off with just probation. A father and son are lucky to be alive after a shark ripped their kayak out from underneath them while they were whale watching. Take a look at this new photo of that kayak showing the size of the shark's bite mark. It covers nearly the entire hull of that two-man kayak. It happened at around 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon about a mile offshore of Ukumehame Beach Park, also known as Thousand Peaks. The Sullivans say while they were in the water, they could see the shark continuing to bite the kayak, and after describing it to experts, they say it may have been a great white. They think it was a great white, which is super rare here on Maui. Usually we have tiger sharks, um, but because the, the, the pointed nose, when its mouth rose up and bit into the kayak, it was like a, a scene out of a movie. Um, the water streaming off of it, these giant teeth coming right at us, and then the way it just pushed the entire boat up halfway and then pulled us back down into the water. All of a sudden, it just kind of came out of nowhere and just flipped us like with a lot of force. And I was like, we're going to die. My dad hit the shark with a paddle, so I'm pretty sure it scared it away for long enough for us to get away. The Sullivans say the shark was about 10 to 13 feet long. That bite mark is about a foot and a half. It took them 35 minutes to swim back to shore and managed to escape without any injuries. The coastline reopened just a few minutes ago. There's a new scientist in charge at the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory on the Big Island. Dr. Ken Hahn, who recently retired from his position as a geology professor at UH Hilo, is no stranger to Hawaii's eruptions. So the role of the scientist in charge is to make sure that everybody has what they need, that all the other scientists and all the technical staff, that they have the equipment they need, the personnel they need, and the environment they need to conduct their jobs. So we want to make sure that things are going smoothly between all of the different groups, because rightly so, each individual person is concentrating on their task at hand. So the scientist in charge and the deputy scientist in charge, we're there to make sure that there's the communication is happening. The next few years in this position is going to be really exciting. You're going to have a lot of activity and responsibilities. Volcanoes themselves are really the poster child for instability. They change, they do different things, right? And working at a volcano observatory, that's your normal, is unstable situations. And so the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory has been in that situation really since 2018 with the loss of the building. So we've lost the original building. We've been moving through temporary quarters. During the next five years, we hope to have a new building built and actually two facilities, one up inside the National Park and one down in Hilo. And we're working on just the early stages of getting those built. So that'll bring a lot more stability to the Volcano Observatory. But the volcanoes themselves are, you know, doing different things. Kilauea, after its 2018 eruption, really poured out a tremendous amount of lava. This caused the entire system to kind of deflate and reorganize. And it's just pumping itself back up and starting again. And the summit eruption, the lava lake at the summit of Kilauea is an indication of this. 
So it's a really great opportunity for us to look and see how the volcano reestablishes pathways for the magma to move inside of it. Mauna Loa, of course, is in the background, and it has been slowly inflating over a number of years. It's kind of paused on that right now. Um, but we don't have a lot of instrumental information on Mauna Loa because it erupts so infrequently. So the last time it erupted was in 1984, just at the start of the modern instrumentation period. We know it behaves in general like Kilauea, but there's some important differences. And so we're hoping, one, to be able to get a better idea of when it might erupt, and two, to learn more about what the precursors are to eruptions on Mauna Loa, since we have a lot of new instrumentation on the mountain. More now from the Big Island, some key lawmakers want to remove the University of Hawaii as the manager of Mauna Kea. They believe UH has not done a good job engaging the community or managing cultural practices, resources, and education. They say the most glaring example is the dispute over the 30-meter telescope. We just feel that it's time for us to discuss creating a new governance system for Mauna Kea that is more inclusive and that is more respectful of cultural practices. I think the... Uh Community engagement and communicating with the community is a challenge for, quite frankly, every landowner and every developer in Hawaii, uh, because there are uh, a plethora of issues uh, that, that make uh, land management, land ownership, land development very difficult. UH's lease expires in 2033. The House will be introducing a resolution to begin that process of establishing a new governance structure. Now to the latest coronavirus numbers. The state health department is reporting 74 new cases today and four more fatalities. The breakdown by island shows four cases on the Big Island, 23 on Maui, 41 on Oahu, and six residents were diagnosed out of state. We showed you severe weather here in Hawaii earlier, but we're also tracking some severe weather on opposite ends of the planet. Authorities in Western Australia are calling wildfires there unprecedented. At least 70 homes have been destroyed. That fire has already burned 22,000 acres and is expected to keep burning for days. Six firefighters have already been injured trying to battle that blaze. And across the eastern seaboard, a brutal nor'easter is dumping snow from Virginia up to Maine. This is drone video from Worcester, Massachusetts, where a fresh blanket of snow fell overnight. Parts of New Jersey and New York have received more than two feet of snow, and forecasters say the storm may not let up until Wednesday morning. Now, the impacts in New York City were so severe that even COVID-19 vaccination centers had to be temporarily closed. We do have a little bit of good news, some breaking news from Major League Baseball this morning. One of our friends of the program, Hawaii Island and former UH baseball star Colton Wong is moving on from the St. Louis Cardinals. He signed a contract this morning with the Milwaukee Brewers. In terms of that deal, two years, $18 million Woo! with a team option for the third year. I can do math. <laughs> Two years at $18 million a year is pretty good as uh, far as annual salaries go. Uh, the contract is pending the result of a physical. Good, though, to see Colton signing uh, another solid deal. We wish him all the best. Uh, there are just some intricacies about baseball that I don't understand. I'm a Red Sox fan. Uh -huh. To see the Red Sox uh, fail to re-sign Mookie Betts a couple of years ago, they traded him uh, to the L.A. Dodgers. I don't understand the thing in baseball where you have good quality star players and you don't want to resign them to your team. I'm going to have to study baseball a little yeah, bit Yeah, maybe it's a guess. finance thing. It could be, mm -hmm. but two years, $18 million as far as baseball contracts go seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, Colton. All right, let's go on to from the feeds what the internet is talking about, you guys. So nominations of the 78th Golden Globes came out today, and Netflix dominated with 42 nods, 22 movies, and 20 in television. Let's take a look at what they're seeing from the feeds. Now the film Mank, about the man who co-wrote the screenplay for Citizen Kane, leads with six nominations, including Best Motion Picture Drama. No surprise here, Hamilton was nominated for Best Musical or Comedy, facing off against Borat's subsequent movie film Palm Springs and The Prom. And in the TV comedy category, Schitt's Creek goes up against newcomer Ted Lasso. 
And for the first time, the award show will be bi-coastal with co-hosts Tina Fey in New York and Amy Poehler in Los Angeles. You know, they're going to be super funny. The awards will be handed out February 28th, and the show was postponed nearly two months because of the pandemic. Uh, the one thing that I think we all enjoyed this year that isn't on that list, uh, nothing for The Queen's Gambit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which took Netflix by storm, so I was a little bit surprised by that. Uh, there was one other that you were talking about. Let me check the list. Uh, Palm Springs oh, was yeah. a Hulu movie it with uh, Andy Samberg. Uh, Sam Samberg, that's it. <laughs> SNL alum. Uh, and that was like a Groundhog Day take. Yes. If you haven't seen that, it's worth pulling up YouTube and watching it, their twist on the Groundhog's Day style of movie. I thought it was really interesting. So if you get a chance, check it out. I agree. And you guys, 10 baby pandas are making their debut in China at the leading panda reserve ahead of the Lunar New Year. So the black and white fluff balls are making their first public appearance in a playground with New Year's decorations, including lanterns, Chinese knots, paper cars, and flags. This is all happening at the China Conservation and Research Center. Now, a number of bamboo baskets with the Chinese character Fu, meaning good fortune and blessings, they were prepared for the pandas, just like how, you know, the tradition of adults giving red envelopes with money inside to children during the Lunar New Year as a way to give them good wishes and blessings. Well, but instead of money, the baby pandas were given snacks. Do you ever get the feeling that you made the wrong career choice? I know. Can you imagine playing with them all day? And that's like if your, your job? whole job was, I, I'm sure there's actual work to it, obviously. <laughs> but if your whole job was to come out and be a caretaker for baby pandas. Sign me up. Yeah, that sounds like something that I could do. Um, no, <laughs> no I, I'm not trying to make the job sound easy, but it sure sounds enjoyable, right, Absolutely. at least? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, time for some good news, everybody. Yeah, how about this for good news? The New England Patriots are flying 76 vaccinated healthcare workers to the Super Bowl on that plane. They're going to fly on that team plane. By the way, also used to deliver more than a million N95 masks to the U.S. from China last year at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, not just the ride on the Patriots' private plane that's going to be free. The NFL announced uh, earlier this year that frontline workers, healthcare heroes, are going to be treated to an all-expenses-paid trip to the Super Bowl wow. on Sunday. Game, uh, game tickets included. Uh, just a way to reach out and show support to the people who work uh, in our healthcare industry. Uh, 22,000 is the number of people who are going to be uh, in the uh, stadium in Tampa for the Super Bowl next year. Uh, I'm sorry, this year on Sunday on CBS. Around 8,000 of them are going to be healthcare workers, so we're excited to see that. That's fantastic. Can't wait for Super Bowl Sunday. And apparently, you guys, there isn't much consensus when it comes to the prognosticating rodents on this Groundhog Day. Georgia's version of Puxatawney <laughs> Phil, who's known as Bo, spread some cheer when he declared an early spring. Bo emerged from his home and did not see his shadow. Unlike Phil, who retreated back into his burrow after noticing his shadow, which means six more weeks of winter. So the first official day of spring is March 20th, so we'll have to to see which, if any rodent, was right. I've never lived on the mainland. I don't understand the, <laughs> the groundhog thing, the shadow. It's always... Well, if they come out and they see the yep. shadow, they get scared and they run away. And that means more winter. <laughs> that, that means I they're going to just burrow back in their holes. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure it out one day. I'll just go spend some time on the mainland. We'll see. That's going to do it for us on This Is Now, you guys.